Jacob and Esau. Before this story we learn of Abraham's death, the father of nations went to be with his Lord. He was buried by Isaac and Ishmael beside his wife Sarah. Isaac and Rebekah had twins named Jacob and Esau. The two, even from the womb, warred against one another. Esau, the older twin, was tricked by his younger brother and sold his birthright. Now we will learn about Rebekah and Jacob tricking Isaac into giving Jacob his blessing, inspired by the book of Genesis. Hello, I'm Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. Today we begin with a famine that takes Isaac and his family to another land, and here, just as his father did, Isaac tells a lie about his wife to protect himself. Fear has once again ruled in the heart of one of God's chosen people. History is repeating itself in a new generation. You'll once again hear how despite a lack of faithfulness on their part, God continues to bless and protect Abraham's family, now through his son, Isaac. Listen to how Isaac prospered in this new land and how he was met with disdain and distrust by others who resented him for the blessings he was reaping, blessings God was giving him. You will also hear how Isaac followed the model of his own father, created remembrances of God's faithfulness and monuments to the God who provides. And in this passage, We'll return to Jacob and Esau and the conflict that began to brew in yesterday's story. You'll hear of hidden intentions, heartbreak, and hatred. Watch how Jacob's craftiness and cleverness and deception finally strike a blow to both Esau and Isaac that will forever alter the course of this family and history. In today's passage, he is not acting alone, but is teeming with Rebekah, his mother, who favors him over Esau. Together, they will trick Isaac into giving Jacob what is meant for his older brother. The family conflict will come into an explosive climax, and you'll hear echoes of two brothers we've heard of long ago, one accepted and the other rejected. Will all be lost? Is there any way for this family to heal? These are the questions you'll be left with as you listen to today's passage. So, let's hear the story now. There was a great famine that plagued the land. The land, once adorned with fertile fields, ceased its growth. The land would soon return to its former glory, yet for the time being, Isaac needed to escape to healthier plains. They escaped to Gerar, a hostile land in which Isaac had never ventured before. When his family settled there, the men in the city were asking about his wife Rebekah, for she was pleasing to the eye. Isaac, out of fear that they might kill him to take his wife, claimed she was his sister, as his father Abraham had done before him, and Adam did generations before him. Isaac compromised the integrity of his wife to protect himself. Yet it did not take long for Isaac to get found out, and a great distress was put upon their leader, Abimelech. Once again, the family of Abraham had underestimated the integrity of foreigners and had created strife amongst them. And yet Isaac worked the ground well. The Lord had instructed Isaac to remain in Gerar instead of fleeing to Egypt, and he was fruitful for it. Isaac grew richer during the famine, and his influence reached far beyond the land of Gerar. The Philistines who dwelled in the land grew envious of him and Isaac became villainized for his success. Abimelech sent him away, for they did not want him growing even more rich off of their land. Isaac and his family wandered for many weeks, and they were met everywhere they went with disdain and conflict. Yet God remained faithful and reminded Isaac of his promise to him. God blessed him, saying, I am the God of Abraham your father. Fear not, For I am with you and will bless you and multiply your offspring for my servant Abraham's sake. And Isaac dug wells as a monument to God's faithfulness. During this time, Esau had married a Hittite woman named Judith. The two of them made Rebekah and Jacob's life miserable and openly mocked them both. Isaac grew old and his eyes began to fade. He could no longer open his eyes to see the fruit of his labor or the ones he loved. 
Isaac, knowing that his time was drawing near, called to his oldest son Esau. My son, he said. Here I am, Esau replied. Go into the countryside with your bow and hunt me an animal. Prepare me a meal and you and I will sit together to eat. Afterwards, I will bless you before I depart. Esau left immediately to hunt for his father, anticipating the blessing that would come afterwards. Rebekah overheard Isaac and Esau and immediately grabbed her son Jacob. Rebekah told Jacob what Isaac was planning on doing, and together they devised a plan to steal away Esau's blessing. Jacob killed a goat and made his father a delicious stew. Rebekah then dressed Jacob in Esau's clothes. Since Esau was a hairy man, Jacob covered himself in goat fur. With Esau's clothes, fur, and stew, Jacob entered into his father's tent, determined to come out with a blessing. Slowly entering into the tent, Jacob lowered his voice and spoke, Here I am, father. Isaac, blind, looked towards Jacob and said, Who is here? It is Esau, your firstborn. I have done what you asked. Please, get up and eat so that you may bless me. Isaac, perplexed, inquired how Esau was able to kill the animal so quickly. The Lord guided my hand and gave me success, Jacob lied. Come here so I can touch you, son. I must know if you are truly Esau. Jacob drew near to Isaac and allowed him to feel his arms and clothes. The trick had worked. Isaac was convinced he was speaking to Esau. The two ate together, and Isaac placed his hands on Jacob. With love and excitement, Isaac spoke over Jacob with the same adoration he would have given Esau. The tender and intimate moment between father and firstborn son was stolen by Jacob. Isaac spoke his blessing over Jacob, reciting a type of ancient poetry, one that would echo throughout all of Jacob's life. See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field that the God has blessed. May God give you of the dew of heaven, the sustenance of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let all people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be king over your brothers and may they bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you, and blessed be everyone who blesses you. As Isaac was finishing his blessing over Jacob, Esau returned from his hunt. Esau tirelessly worked as he skinned the deer, butchered it, and prepared his father's favorite meal. Blessing was in reach, and he hurried to his father's tent with a meal. Jacob had left Isaac's side, and Esau approached him. Father, I have come back from my hunt. Here, take and eat, so that you may bless me. Who are you? he answered crossly. I am your firstborn son, Esau. I have come back from my hunt. Isaac trembled and became violent. In a rage, Isaac raised his voice, saying, Who was it then that brought me food? I have blessed him, and he will be blessed. As soon as Esau heard this, he bellowed a deep and bitter cry. Sorrow, rage, and anguish welled up in Esau's heart. His brother had tricked him into giving up his birthright, and now he had stolen what mattered most, his father's blessing. Frantically, and with tears filling his eyes, Esau begged his father, Bless me also, my father. Have you not reserved any blessing for me? Please do not leave me here alone. Isaac was enraged at Jacob, yet could not recant his blessing over him. I have made him lord over you, Isaac said. I have blessed him as an inheritor of all God has given me, and you will serve under him. Esau wept bitterly. His face fell into his hands as he managed to ask, Is there any blessing you can give me? Anything at all? Isaac spoke again in ancient poetry, welling up with sadness for his son. He spoke, saying, Behold, away from the richness of the earth you shall dwell, and away from the dew of heaven on high. 
You shall live by your sword, and you shall serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you shall break his yoke from your neck. A dark part of Esau's heart was awakened that day. Thousands of generations had passed since Cain had killed his brother Abel, yet that same hatred lingered, seeking whom it may take hold of. When Isaac had breathed his last and went to be with his father Abraham, Esau sighed a deep breath and said, The days of mourning my father are approaching. After I mourn, I will kill my brother Jacob. Esau spoke these words to himself, yet they caught the ear of his mother Rebekah. She sent for Jacob and said to him, Your brother plans to kill you after he has mourned your father. Gather your things and flee to my brother Laban. He will take care of you until your brother's fury subsides. So Jacob fled in the dead of night and waited there until his brother's anger dimmed and he could return to claim what was now rightfully his. As we begin today's passage, there is a famine sweeping across the land. Isaac and his family are unable to stay where they are, and the Lord speaks to Isaac to tell him where not to go and where he should settle. This was not a case of Isaac fleeing in fear and not trusting God. He was following God's direction and taking his family to a better place for a season. Sadly, his trust only went so far because just like his father Abraham on two separate occasions, Isaac feared for his life in a land of pagans, and he told people that Rebekah was his sister. Rather than being the leader and protector she needed, Isaac thought of his own safety more highly than that of his wife's. And just like his father, his lies found out by the king, Isaac discovers that he has underestimated the righteousness of those around him, but worse, he failed to trust God. Nevertheless, God blesses Isaac in his planting efforts and Isaac bears much fruit from this land. Eventually, this does not sit well with the locals, who become envious of him. Soon, Isaac and his family are forced to leave and wander, meeting opposition and conflict at every turn. But once again, we see God remaining faithful to his promise. He protects and blesses Isaac and his family and provides for them. Isaac, following the good example of his father this time, digs wells as a form of remembering God's faithfulness. There is a great importance in setting up ways of remembering what God has done. You may not build an altar or dig a well or erect a monument, but you can still do things that help you remember what God has done in your life and your family. The next thing we find in our story is Esau, who has grown bitter, likely as a result of giving up his birthright. He is married and he and his wife show utter contempt for his parents. And yet, even as he grows old and blind, Isaac continues to choose Esau as his favorite. It is to him that Isaac intends to give his paternal blessing. But Jacob wants that blessing. It's worth noting that Jacob wasn't wrong to want the blessing. He was seeking God and his favor. The intention, the desire itself was not wrong. In fact, it was a good thing to want the blessing of God. The problem was how he went about getting it. Jacob, prompted by his mother, Rebekah, schemes with her to take this blessing away from his brother. They take advantage of Isaac's frailty and inattention and trick him into thinking Jacob is his older brother. This was no simple deception. They went to great lengths to ensure it was Jacob and not Esau who would get the blessing. So while Esau is out hunting to make a meal for his old and dying father, We see here in this passage a total severing of the family bond. The deceit and bitterness and jealousy and rivalry has reached maturity. Esau is consumed with anger and hatred towards his brother and vows to kill him, an echo of the first two brothers in history, Cain and Abel. Jacob, despite having received the blessing, is terrified and forced to run away to Rebekah's family where he will live for many years. There's so much to be learned in this story. Once again, we see the destructiveness of favoritism. But there's something even deeper. Rather than getting his house in order as his life neared to an end, Isaac was interested only in filling his stomach. Listen to the words of Genesis 27, 2, 3, and 4. Isaac said, 
Behold, now I am old, and I do not know the day of my death. Now then, please take your gear, your quiver, and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me, and prepare a savory dish for me such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat so that my soul may bless you before I die. Isaac, knowing that he would soon die, could have brought his sons together along with his wife and charged them with maintaining unity and love and continuing trust in God. Instead, all he wanted was dinner. It would take years for this family conflict to resolve, and by then, so much had been lost. While Abraham was a shining example of how to carefully order one's last days to ensure a legacy that honors God, Isaac's life shines as a light on the danger of selfishness and self-indulgence. May we seek to be more like Abraham and less like Isaac in our old age. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this story and how you continue to show yourself faithful and true to Isaac, even as he stumbled and failed to trust in you. Thank you also for the valuable lesson about family and the warnings about dishonesty, favoritism, and being passive in our leadership with our children. Help us to honor you with our families. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you know, someone you love, because by sharing this podcast, you can make a big difference in someone's life. And if you want more resources as to how to live the Christian life, how to know God and experience His presence in your life, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. God bless you. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.